Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have a new item and it is called Fluke Friday. And in the Fluke Friday my plan is to show you all kinds of Fluke devices that I have collected over the years. I'm a big fan. And uh, yeah, as you know they have multimeters, temperature meters, desktop multimeters. I have here an uh, AC-DC differential meter, frequency counters, calibrators. I have a big calibrator also there. So I want to show them a little bit by, by series, not necessarily by all the multimeters together or all the frequency counters together. Um, I have also a series with mixies in it, so the older fluke meters. So it's going to be kind of cool. Little disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Fluke. These and these items are not original, but I made this for the purpose of this video because I'm a fan and of course because of the copyright. It will not be for sale. So we start with the first series. So I thought, okay, that would be the 10 series, the 10, 11 and the 12. The little multimeter with just very little buttons and then the 11 has a little bit more and the 12 has all the options. And then I was going through my multimeters and then I found a, a yellow 10 series and I thought, what is that? So then I look a little bit closer and it is the 7 and it is not a multimeter, but it is an electrical tester and it only has an on off button. We zoom in on that later and it is the 7 uh, stroke 600 and I found out there is also a 7 300. But uh, 7 is lower than the 10, so we start with that. And also I have this fault alert. It is a, a non-contact voltage detector and it is the version 2. So it is the 1 AC and it is the version 2. And it comes also for different countries, different type numbers. We also have a closer look in that. So we start with the 1 AC. So let's have a better look. The non-contact voltage detector, it's called the fault alert and the type number is the 1AC and this is the second and the E is for Europe. I have, have a little list uh, for that and then we start playing. I have here the 1AC version 1 and it is around, well this one is a little bit uh, square. Maybe I'll find the color picture of this one. It's the 1AC and this is the E version and the E is for Europe and it means it starts detecting from 200 volts up to 1000 volts and if you have an A version for the US then it will start already beeping or blinking at 90 volts and there is even for North America is an LAC version for low AC voltages and then it starts already at 20 volts but then there is a maximum of 90 volts. I've been looking in some websites, some sell them around 50 euros and uh, but you can find them in eBay starting from 25 I think and if you are not scared to get a, a copy then you can find them also in AliExpress for around 15 I think I saw them. I will leave some links but of course uh, if you want to be sure you have the original one go to the official store. Oh, how does it work? Well, one small push, it's on and you see it blinking. You can also hear the beep. So now it is including the beep and it is just voltage detection. So if we keep it to the cable, this, you see the cable is live. The light uh, blinks. I'm not sure you can see, but the light is red. There is power on this cable and it beeps. If you want to switch it off, push a little bit longer and you hear a long beep and then it's off. If you don't like the beep, then you switch it on but by pushing longer. So I, I push now almost two seconds. Now it is only blink, so there is no audio. And of course, if we get the cable, it just goes on without beeping at all and to switch it off again long push you hear a beep now it's switched off that's it you can also measure your socket of course this one is still blinking 
So this is the neutral. Here it's full. This is the live iron. Well, it works on uh, two AAA batteries, and uh, well, you can do many, many hours with it. And well, I've been looking how to open it for the battery, and I didn't find it in the manual, but on the website, on the help page of uh, Fluke, there I could find it. And you just need to push him hard, and then you can sort of slide it out. Well, pushing very hard didn't work for me, but I just put with a screwdriver in this hole. And then uh, you can just slide it open. And there are the two batteries. That's it. You close it. Plug. Batteries replaced. So that uh, one AC is really super simple to use. And uh, well, you see, by the way, more and more that this uh, non-contact voltage detection is uh, built into the normal uh, multimeters. I show a few from Kaiwitz that already had that, uh, usually in the top of the, usually in the top of the multimeter. And uh, but uh, at Fluke they have a separate. Super simple. If you want to do a little bit more than just knowing it's a live wire or it's not a live wire, you have this electrical tester. It is, it has less function than a multimeter. It only has an on and off button, and uh, you will see a bit more. So of this one, there are two: the 7300 that goes up to 300 volts, and the 7600 that is this one. It's probably the most useful, and it will test, yeah, or or ohms between zero and 400, or it does AC volts or DC volts, and it will detect itself. And yeah, there only is an on and off button, so that is the huge difference between if we get the brother the series 10, then you have an on/off button, and you can select which option you want, and. There's also another slight difference. Usually these multimeters have an impedance like 10 mega ohm. This one is different. This one has, it says here also, low impedance. And it is around 2K, I think, uh, 2000 ohms. And so it puts a little bit more load on the system that you are testing. And with your multimeter, you don't necessarily want that because you will influence the circuit. This one is just made for simple testing. It's not meant for uh, sensitive equipment. So this is lower impedance. And then the, the plus for that is that if there are little distortions on the voltage that you are measuring, you will not see that because it just, yeah, it puts more, a little bit more load. Uh, so four to 600 volts in AC, four to 600 volts in DC and your ohms. And it will beep, and it will beep all the time <laughs> because uh, it only measures from zero to 400, and uh, yeah, above 400, it doesn't measure anymore. Well, that makes sense also because you have your low impedance here, and uh, yeah, I don't know when it will stop beeping 50 ohms or 300 ohms, or it won't uh, stop beeping at all. That's also possible. So, the only thing we can do is switch it on and uh, by default it is in uh, beeping ohms mode until we try to measure something. Okay well we're gonna put it to the test but I like to mention already the accuracy is not that good because it is not necessarily made for that well not that good. Uh, AC is like 3% plus 3 digit I, I'm doing it at the top um, or in DC it's like one and a half percent also plus three digits, plus or minus three digits. And, uh, but it is also made for just to get a rough idea what, what kind of voltage you're dealing with. Because if you want precise, you get a real multimeter. Okay, let's put it to the test. I have my process calibrator, the LBO2A. It is uh, just a simple tester. I don't need high accuracy now, but it is, it is in ohms mode. Now let's just put it to ohms mode. First, just loose, switch it on. This one is also in ohms mode, and if we connect, yes, 0.1 ohms, 
it's beeping and it's good. Here we have 20 ohms and well, let's see, 20 ohms. It will see 20 ohms and it is beeping. Okay, at 350 ohms it stops beeping, and you see it is uh, spot on in that sense, 350.0 ohms and 350 on the calibrator. It goes up to 400, and it is spot on. One more, it is overload over range. So the ohms works good. Okay, DC voltage, I put there 0.2 volts, it stays in the default ohms mode. That makes sense because it starts detecting from 4 volts. Well, it even detects 3.6 already. And we go up, 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 up to 4. You see, here is that last digit that they say you need to add plus minus the last digit three times, and that's okay. Still, the voltage works well. If I go a lot higher, 6, 6.6, also still good. volts and here we are kind of stuck because it says 9.8 and if I go any higher it doesn't go higher well that has to do with the low impedance this calibrator is made for 10 mega ohms and then it doesn't do that but we can use a normal power supply okay I feel my second power supply we just do DC volts the output is not switched on. I set it to 13 volts if I switch the output on. Oh, you can see here it is in its default ohms in measure mode. Now it will detect, oh, there is a, a DC voltage. And it will show the DC voltage. And, well, exactly within spec, because it is the three digit. Let me get some more. Go to 19 volts, 28 volts, 32 volts. Well, that detects. Let's put some AC. Let's go a little bit higher. 300 volts. Output on. Here we go. 310. And it says 301. And... 1.7 too high, but we have this 3% and then plus of min three digits. So within specs. Well, in that time, I bought it uh, second hand, and if you can see, it is just used. It is uh, a little bit dirty. This is not how I store my meter, so I really didn't have a look at it before. And uh, yeah, we just need to clean it a little bit, and uh, we can have a look inside. Yeah, the, it is held by these plastic screws, so it's not necessarily made to uh, open and close it a lot of times. Uh, by the way, the display is uh, 4,000 counts, and the battery you can run at about 650 hours. So, and uh, well, it's just a simple 9 volt battery, and it looks actually quite nice inside. And the buzzer is huge, so maybe if it disturbs you too much, you can just put the tape on the on the hole. Let me put it in the magnifier. It says Fluke 1X 3001, revision 100, and then it says 94V. Zero. 
I don't know what it means, but uh, very little uh, components on this side. Well, I can throw, try to open it a little bit further. It seems to be locked here and locked here. These are very big lockings and these are small. So, and I see here the pins of the screw, so I can probably lift it here. I'm only a little bit afraid that maybe the display will go loose because I don't know how it is stuck and maybe it is just stuck here and uh, yeah I can also not fold it completely because it will not go over the pins then or will it okay. maybe it will yeah the display is loose this with these zebra strips. Okay, I have put it under the microscope. And it seems to be one of uh, Fluke's own chips, the 858472. And we have here an NEC chip. Ah, here, yeah. let me try to turn it around. And Depending on how the light is reflected, we should be able to read it. Yes, let me focus. Here we are. Well, that is about it. There is also not that much. So it's everything is pre-programmed what it should do. And there is one pot that it was within spec, so I'm not touching that. But yeah, that is probably to set your base for all the settings. I am now in the opportunity to clean it. I saw the display didn't need opening, but I see here it is not a scratch. Can I see show it? Yeah, it is not a scratch, but it is dirt from the inside. So I do need to open it and take that out because this little scratch here I can polish and then the rest I can clean. But this is on the inside, it is just, maybe it seems yellow, maybe it's just a piece of plastic. So I need to open it. So let's see how that works. Can we just take the plastic out? How is this stuck? Well, I took the rest also out. You can see there is some shielding and it's almost like they use the same plastic molds for this because this is the 12 series with all these smudge buttons. It's only that this one is yellow and well, here was the dirt. So let me clean this. We put it back together and uh, I hope it's symmetric. Yes, it is. And... Uh, then we put it back together, try to make it look new. Okay, look at that. Cleaning really makes a huge, huge difference. Look at this. It is almost like new. It is completely nice and yellow as it was. I managed to take out the scratches. It is still a little bit left, but it is hardly noticeable. And it is super bright to see. I think this was a success. So that was the idea behind the, the Fluke Friday. Every time a different series. Now I had below the 10, this 7600 and this AC1 version 2. And uh, yeah, we just open it and uh, clean it a bit if possible. This one really is like new. I like the result. And uh, next time we're going to do the 10 series. So the Fluke 10, 11.
and 12. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.